Hi, I am Dr. Julie Brown. I am your trained concussion doctor and board certified chiropractic neurologist. Today, I want to talk about a particular type of eye movement called a saccade. My job is pretty fun because I measure eye movements because they do affect how the musculoskeletal body performs. And there are really six different types of eye movements and they use the entire brain and we measure them throughout, but we're gonna focus on saccades. Saccade means a fast movement. I think it's used in music. Could be wrong on that, but I'm pretty sure it is. And if I did something like standing here and I lean to move my center of pressure as quickly as I could, that would be a saccadic movement. The way we measure it, I use a saccadometer, VNG, a thing called right eye, measure it a few different ways. And what you, a saccade looks like this. You look from one target to the other tar target. So it's a fast target. It's faster than 30 degrees per second. That means we have to use a fast eye movement. If, if it was less than 30, we would do, end up doing what's called a pursuit. Now, the difference between these two, or to get more to saccades, is that movement is so fast, it doesn't have time for an image to get onto the retina, go to the uh, occipital lobe and say, hey, here's what we're seeing. So the saccadic eye movement is important because if you have too many or too little, or they're not accurate, so you end up making more, it does affect the stability of the spine and different parts of the neuro axis. So there are different types of saccades. We can use them to measure. We know different speeds of things. So we have memory saccades where if I looked at this thumb here, close my eyes, I open up to know exactly where that target is. We do uh, volitional saccades. So I'm choosing to look back and forth. We can do reflexive where something else triggers you to move because there's a movement to look at to the other. There are anti saccades where I'd have a target here and I'd say look opposite of the moving target so you'd look opposite and come back. Uh, there's, there's different variety and we use them for different reasons because they use different parts of the brain. When we measure them, I me measure volitional and reflexive and what are called gap saccades in particular where the target will appear here, it'll disappear and then this one will appear. So it has a different speed aspect to it. So we look at, first off, latency. Latency is how quickly your eyes finally realize the target's gone or the new one is, appears and when you in, how long it takes for you to initiate to move the eyes. That's related to latency and very much a frontal lobe aspect. Second, we look at velocity. So how fast the eyes move to the target. Do they go fast, slow down, fast again? So we look at these graph curves. It should be a beautiful left skewed curve, but sometimes we get these biphasic curves, which help can help guide uh, therapy, though you need to look at it in the context of the whole person. Um, we look at position. Does the target, hit, does the saccade hit the target? So if I go here, do my eyes go bam right onto it or do they go bam, bam? or do they, which would be a hypometric saccade, they could do lots of these. This is common in Parkinson's, for example. Do they overshoot and come back, which would be a hypermetric saccade. So we know, hey, maybe the cerebellum or the maps are off and we need to do other tests to identify the area of the brain that's not functioning to the level it should. And then we go and we do applications to help stimulate parts of the brain specifically to see if we can change the dynamics of these saccades. So they're a pretty great, fun thing to work with. Uh, I give them as therapy, not to everybody, obviously it depends on the person, and that's it. There's fun little science to it. If you have any questions, feel free to ask below. You can go to the website, ask me personally, and we will see you next time. Thanks.